I forgot to turn the TV oh, off, love. I'm a big dopey dope. Could you could you do me another little favour while you're here, love? And, the, and and everybody's very grateful for all of your help. Could you get rid of this back thing for me? It's taken me a bit of getting used to. And while you're down there, what? Oh, what? There you go. That's the stream demonetized. Thanks, Sabrina. Sorry. Oh, look there. You can see your head behind me. Oh, there she is. Oh, she's live. Everybody say hi to Sabrina. She, look, yeah. there she is, there's her arm. Hi. 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 Right. I need to get to me before I go to the gym now. Well, you're down there. <laughs> that's twice now. That, that's two F words, F bombs that I can't drop because you've robbed. See, now you know where I get the swearing from. See you next Tuesday. Yes, I'll see you next Tuesday as well, love. Love you. Right, so Chris has said sell Lucho and buy Geertruda and Kudis. On both of those things, let's start off with the selling Lucho. So Liverpool don't want to sell Diaz. That is the line coming out of the football club, but that doesn't stop Barcelona from having googly eyes towards Mr. Luis Diaz. So with regards to Lucho, um, Dario, who I would put in the very, take it with a pinch of salt range, have said that Liverpool have put a 75 million euro or just under 70 million pound Price tag on Luis Diaz should any club wish to come in and try to secure his services. Now, for me, there's only really two clubs that could possibly come in. PSG and Barcelona. It looks like from a lot of the publications that I've been reading over the past week or so that the likelihood of one of our forwards leaving is probably fair. And the two names that keep getting mentioned are Diaz and Salah. Now, I did my keep, loan, sell, buy video, which went up yesterday, and I hope you got a chance to watch it. But some of the comments seem to really have no basis of reality. People saying things like, sell Salah, are you mad? And yet you want to keep Darwin. Well, I think these things need context, right? And part of the context is, Salah has one year left to go on his deal. He's 32 years of age. And the other players, Darwin Nunes, who we haven't seen the best of yet, we have a new coach coming in and he's got at least three years left on his contract. So these things always need some um, context. It looks like Diaz or Salah, one of those two are sort of, they're being spoken about in journalistic circles as the likely ones or one to leave if Liverpool do indeed lose a forward. I'd keep Trent at right back and have Maka by Cechic, Ederson as options for the double pivot, but I think Trent could work in a double pivot. So... I'm intrigued to see what Slot does because I know a lot of us assume Trent's going into midfield. And, you know, the fact that Gareth Southgate's looking at him as a midfield option for the Euros kind of just pushes that further along. But those who've watched RNA Slot will know that he plays sometimes with an inverted fullback and Trent may well stay a fullback. And if he does stay a pullback, fullback, excuse me, then we may have the situation you're talking about where you've got like a Bicecic and a McAllister or a Gravenberg and an Ederson or other options. So yeah, it is going to be very interesting, which is why I'm looking forward to hearing from RNA Slot because I can imagine one of the first questions he's going to be asked about the playing squad will be about Trent's position and of course Trent's contract. Uh, I think this is controversial, but I think Trent could be a Beckham type player on the right wing. So... I would be lying to you, George, if there weren't times where I did think similar to your good self. Um, but ultimately, when I've heard coaches and players and former players speak about Trent, they're always at pains to say they want him in the middle of the park because that's where he can do his best work. That's where he can show his full range of passing. That's where he can be the best version of Trent and impact the games the most. I think the days of a David Beckham wide player football is a little bit different now they're more interested in attacking the half spaces than those and they were beautiful crosses from David Beckham um a bit rarer these days now ironically Trent has the capability of those exact type of balls you're talking about kind of I call them the Man City De Bruyne balls towards the back post late run coming in but I do agree with the I was going to say with my fellow pros, um, with the pros that Trent probably needs to be in the centre of the park somewhere to have the biggest impact. So this comes in from the Echo and Ian Doyle, who said, A new wide forward is more likely, given the doubts over the long-term features of Mohamed Salah and Luis Diaz. Like I spoke to you guys about earlier on, they were the two names 
in media circles that are most likely to depart either this summer or next summer. So Ian goes on to say that Johan Bakayoko of PSV Eindhoven and West Ham's Mohamed Kudus offer the greatest intrigue. Leeds winger Crescentia Somerville is another worthy of note. Now on Somerville, it's a real mixed bag. Some people believe that Liverpool are no longer interested and then others like Fabrizio Romano and maybe even Ian Doyle believe that we haven't made the final decision yet. Everybody agrees that Somerville was somebody that was on the list of people we were looking at. It's just a matter of who you believe with regards to whether we backed away at that interest or not. Chelsea have been linked with them quite strongly as well. And they were the favourites with the bookies to sign them. Um, they were like 6-4, to four, something like that, to sign them. So look, I want to start off tonight with, I guess, a bit of a clearing of the air. Because the other day we did report on John W. Henry's compatriot or FSG co-owner, Tom Werner, speaking about the idea of Liverpool playing games in New York, Sao Paulo, Tokyo, um, Rida, and everywhere else in the world. Well, it seems like that our owners are on different pages. Now, Tom Werner's background is in television production and stuff, so no surprise that he wants to try and add some glitz and glamour to everything but Forbes have reported so you know Forbes a pretty pretty serious outlet Forbes have reported that Liverpool owner John W Henry is against chairman Tom Werner's idea of playing Premier League games abroad commenting that it's not something he is interested in or would advocate for John you're not going to hear me say this many times my friend but thank you well played Mr John W Henry for once I'm actually giving you a thumbs up John most Liverpool fans have high expectations. Yes. And it's tough, Leon, at times to figure out what's realistic and what's... I don't know a better phrase than the one I'm about to use. So I do apologise in advance for this. But at times, the Liverpool fan base, me included, some people are very happy with the way FSG operate. But then there are other people like me who feel like we've almost been browbeaten or have Stockholm syndrome of our expectation levels is that we're so used to underwhelming business that the idea of dropping a hundred million seems alien to us and I can't really figure out if that's because of the owners or if it's genius if it's wrong and they're being tight I don't know. But I know that expectations are certainly different to other clubs. So Chelsea fans will look at it and go, 100 million sign and I might get one. Arsenal fans have got one. When we see ourselves linked with a 100 million pound player, let's be honest, most of the time we'll come in and go, well, it's 100 million, so that's that then. Not happening. People will then go, Caicedo. But yeah, we didn't get Caicedo, so they didn't technically spend the money. So I don't know if that's because of the owners or because we operate in that way because of the way we are as a club. I don't know. But I know it pisses me off that we're one of the top five or six clubs in the world. From any metric you look at, especially with the financials, and we never seem to have the ability to go head to head for a superstar. That... that I can't lie, that, that gets to me at times. I've always enjoyed that we develop stars. You know, Mohamed Salah, case in point, a recent example. Uh, Luis Suarez, another one, of course. But I just like it once, just for John to go, here's the wallet, do it. Because we've heard a lot about Liverpool would be willing to spend big for the right player. And we've seen the likes of a Bellingham come and gone. Declan Rice come and gone. So you just wonder when. When is that player ever going to emerge where we actually do go? This player is going to solve this position for the next eight years. Bang. 